Assalamu alaikum. We are talking about hydrogen atom. In the last video, we talk about the variables for the Schrodinger equation, and we also derive the Schrodinger equation in a new set of variables. So we started with a hydrogen atom, and we, we said that the position of electron is denoted by R1, and the momentum of electron is P1, while the position and momentum for the proton are R2 and P2. We also said that these variables uh, satisfy or obey the canonical commutation relation. We also said that the potential between the electron and the proton or the nucleus for a hydrogen-like atom, like helium plus or lithium two plus, can be written like this, exactly, it is exactly like this. And this potential depends only between the distance between the position of electron and nucleus. In the case of hydrogen atom, the nucleus has only one proton. So the Schrodinger equation would be like this. So this is the kinetic energy term for electron. This is the kinetic energy term for the nucleus or proton. And this is the potential between the electron and the nucleus. And the psi R1, R2 is the wave function. E total is the total energy of the system. Here M1 and M2 are the masses of electron and nucleus. For hydrogen atom, M2 would be the mass of proton. Now we wanted to change the variables from the experience of classical mechanics. We know that whenever we have a system like this, like hydrogen atom, um, a mass at the center, which is a proton, and an electron is moving around the nucleus or the proton, then this can be uh, uh, expressed as a center of mass problem, as a two-body problem with a center of mass. So we define the two variables the uh, for the r for the relative uh, distance between the proton and the electron and uh, this r is the position of the center of mass the corresponding momentums are like this one the p is the relative momentum and the capital p is the total momentum here mu is the reduced mass and we say that one by mu equals one by m1 plus one by M2. Also, these variables satisfy the canonical commutation relation. We have shown that for uh, one of the components, you can review that or you can try that uh, yourself also. Now, we, we had this uh, with these new variables, new set of variables, uh, we could write the Schrodinger equation like this. So, this is the kinetic energy term for the center of mass. This is the kinetic energy term of the relative motion. And this is the central potential. We say central potential because it only depends only the value of R. It doesn't depend on the angles. And also since the position of the center of mass is independent of the relative motion. So we write that the wave function can be written uh, as the function of as a product of two functions. One depends on the capital R, another one depends on small r. Now, from here, if we uh, divide it with this function, again, we can write like this. Uh, so this is, uh, this function, this only depends on r, and this term only depends on r. So if we write the E total equals E center of mass plus E as a two term, and then we can write the two equations, two separate equations like this. So this is from this one, we get the equation for the center of mass, the Schrodinger equation for center of mass. And from this equation, we get the Schrodinger equation for the uh, relative motion of electron. So we have two uh, equations like this. Now, this can be seen as a motion of a particle of mass m, the free particle. It doesn't have any uh, potential. It's only the kinetic energy. And this can be seen as a, uh, as a fictitious particle moving in a potential V of R, and the particle has mass mu. 
so we can see this uh, we can uh, if we in, see this that the uh, solving this equation is much difficult than solving these two equation that is we got a uh, easier task now after uh, separating the variables now we can easily solve this equation and this is what we actually know this is the uh, solution of a free par free particle uh, Schrodinger equation, and this is the, of a particle moving in a potential v of r. Now, um, this v of r is actually given with this equation. So here you can see again, this potential is only dependent on r. It doesn't have any angle dependency. Only the magnitude of the separation between the uh, between electron and proton or nucleus. Now let's try to solve this equation. So this is a Schrodinger equation. This is a second order differential equation. You can see, and the solution would be of course the exponential. And after normalization, we can get the solution like this. So I'm not going to show you how to normalize it. You can do the normalization. That's easy. And here the energy for the center of mass would be given h square k square by two m. This is the kinetic energy of the center of mass uh, in the laboratory system. So oh, we know this the solution now for the center of mass equation, but in reality, this is rarely used because whenever we talk about the uh, hydrogen atom, it is mostly, uh, we talk about this equation, the Schrodinger equation and the each solution. So though we have uh, found the solution for the center of mass, and uh, if we get the solution for that this one, then we can construct the total wave function, which is uh, equal to this r and multiplied with psi of r. So, but uh, this uh, this is rarely talked about because this is a, a typical solution. It doesn't give anything. Uh, one thing because the proton is very heavy compared to the electron, two thousand times. So it uh, rarely moves compared to electron. The motion of a proton is very uh, little. That's why this is uh, almost neglected almost all of the time. But if you want to construct the total uh, Schrodinger uh, total wave function, you can just do it by multiplying the solution for this with, the, with this function. Okay, now let's move on this one. We want to solve this one because this is the actual thing that we are interested in. So, the Hamiltonian here is the, this is the kinetic energy term, and this is the potential. If we write it in spherical polar coordinates, the uh, this nabla square is written with this expression, this long expression, and you can see from here, this is the mostly R dependent part, and this is uh, theta dependent part divided by R square. So we can write it like this L square, and we know this is the uh, angular momentum operator square in spherical polar coordinates. The angular momentum operator is square or L square is given in this equation. But we have here R square. So we just put the R square here and we are missing here H, H hat is, um, sorry, H cat is square. And we have a minus here. So we put this term like that way so that we have the, we can replace this as for, for this uh, angle dependent parts. Now, um, Again, for this one, for L square, we know that the eigenvalues once we know the wave function. So uh, to take the minus, uh, if we multiply this minus here, and then we have like this one. So this is plus here now because we have taken min minus inside the parenthesis. So we have this kind, uh, we have the Schrodinger equation like this. And this is uh, and this doesn't depend on time. Now we can see here that we have R dependent and we have theta dependent. So we can write the wave function psi uh, as psi R theta phi. And also we can separate the dependent, uh, R dependent and the angle dependent part. The angle dependent part is spherical harmonics and it only comes from L square. And for other terms, it comes the uh, radial part, we call it this radial part RL. Here actually we denoted it to be a subscript L, but we will show that it also depends on the principal quantum number M. And here the L is the angular momentum quantum number and M is the magnetic quantum number. 
So if we put the, if we write uh, the, instead of shy r, if we write this one, the, the with variable separation, then we have the Schrodinger equation. Uh, sorry, just to remind you what is the spherical harmonics is. Uh, from uh, once uh, the eigenvalue for the spherical harmonics for the operator L square is A hat square L intel plus one. And this is the expression for the spherical harmonics. And uh, they are orthonormal. And this is for M getter equal zero, but for M less than zero, we can get uh, from this equation. And P is the associated Lysander function. Okay, let's go back what we are talking about. We are talking about the solution of the this uh, Schrodinger equation. And we'll start with the solution, since we know the solution for the spherical harmonics, we are now focus, we will now focus on the radial equation. So for this one, if we put everything here, so, so we have uh, in a stand of shy, we wrote all the details, then we use this equation, then we dropped the angle dependent part. So we have this expression because these are the number angle uh, uh, numbers. So once we have the number, we can drop that down. So, but now you can see from here, there's this uh, as R goes to infinity, we will have only these two terms. So this simplifies the life. So we'll first focus only uh, for this asymptotic uh, solution for the R tends to be infinity. Then we will talk about the general solution. So for asymptotic uh, term, there's R tends to infinity, we will have these two terms. So we have minus here and the E, but E is negative. So we write it like the modulus of this. So now we have the second order differential equation, uh, which we need to solve. So for that, we can write the trial solution like to be this way, here A, E to the power minus some constant. This is actually this, Term. Okay, we have uh, write this. If we do the derivative, uh, take the derivative of R L twice, we will have this term. Actually, okay. Now here we have two constants A and B, which we need to determine. But if we know that as R tends to infinity, the R L should go to zero, or at least it should be. Uh, what we can say, it, sh it should be non-infinity number, okay? But uh, we see that if uh, from this term, as R goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, but the RL cannot go to infinity. So we assume that, that B should be zero because it doesn't uh, satisfy the condition of the wave function. So these two satisfy the condition for the wave function B need to be zero. So with b equals zero, we'll have, uh, we'll not have this term anymore actually. So we'll not have with b equals zero. Uh, and uh, we put e equals uh, like this way. So this is the ground state energy for the, from the Bohr theory. So we have the solution for rl equals a e to the power minus z r divided by a u. Here a u is the Bohr radius. This is actually doing some simple math. You can show that A U, uh, this is the modified board radius, sorry, this is the modified board radius and A zero is the board radius. And because we actually uh, not solving the problem for electron anymore, we are solving the problem for a fictitious particle of mass and mu, but the, for the electron, the mass is M. So this, is, uh, this needs some simplification here. Uh, you can get this from here actually. This, so this is the energy term and uh, it's written here like this. Now if you simplify from here, you will get the modified Bohr radius. Okay, now to uh, normalize this, uh, we need to use this expression. This is the uh, integration over the R only because the third dependent part is not here and that should give us one. So uh, when you do so, you may need to use this uh, standard integration. Once you do that, you will have the result for R10. Here actually one is the uh, principal quantum number, n, the value of n is one, and the value of L is zero. 
uh, because uh, these actually these solutions actually depends on uh, n. That's why we, here we have written the subscript n l, both n and l. So the value of n is one, the value of l is zero. So that is the solution. And uh, if we multiply this, or if we write the total solution, that is uh, psi r, that should be r l and the spherical harmonics, then we will have the solution like this. And this is actually the solution for one s orbital, that is for n equals one, l equals zero. And in that case, m also equal to zero. So we started with the solution for r tends to infinity, but fortunately, this is the exact solution for psi one s, that is for the psi one zero zero. So this is the solution for the one s. Now for the hydrogen atom, we need to put z equals one. If we put z equals one, we will have the solution for the hydrogen atom. Now, uh, we are not going to derive the total solution, but we show you that the total solution for radial part is written like this way, this equation. And uh, here the rho is defined like this and uh, a, u, a mu is defined like this. And alpha, uh, sorry, uh, L, alpha beta is the associate Lagro polynomial. So this is the solution for um, radial part or the radial equation of the uh, hydrogen wave function. So uh, here, some of the forms, if you just put the values here and the values of N, you can get some of these values like this. Here are some other, now these are the plot of some of the values, uh, one zero, uh, two one, two zero, three one, like this. And the total solution will be like this. So the radial part is multiplied with the uh, uh, spherical harmonics, then we'll have the total solution. And as I told you, n is the principal quantum number and the value goes from one, two, three, four, five, like this. And L is from zero to minus L minus one. And we know that M is uh, minus L two plus L through zero. This is also called, this is called the, M is called the magnetic uh, quantum number. And L is the angular or orbital, ang um, orbital angular momentum quantum number. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, thank you.